All right, welcome to the No Eggs podcast. Today we have a really cool guest. Um, we've had quite a few kids on uh, actually in the past like couple months here. So this is our third youth athlete. Hopefully you could bring on some more um, as you know as long as their parents permit. But we have Emma Nguyen, who's also my niece. She brought in uh, all of her trophies. Um, she just competed in state that and took six. Uh, in state for her age division, and she's here with her mother, my sister, Momo. How you doing? Um, so, Emma, how long have you been doing gymnastics? Um, I've been doing gymnastics for about seven years. Seven years. Mm-hmm. How old are you? I'm ten. Oh, you're a lot older than I thought. I told two you were like seven. That, and so when you said seven years, I was like, wait a minute. That doesn't sound right. But, wow, you're a lot older than I thought. That's awesome. So you have started when you were three? Like two and a half. Two and a half. So is that the normal age when people get started? I don't think so. Okay. That's probably pretty early, huh? Yeah, Yeah. she started early. (laughs) Was was that something that you enjoyed gymnastics? Because, you know, whenever there's... Whenever you put your kid in school, it's always like, what sports do I put him in? Is yeah. that something that you yeah. kind of just... Well, I think um, every mom that has a little girl, they usually kind of start in gymnastics, in gymnastics or dance, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah, and that's so true. that's 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 the path that, that every little girl takes. Yeah. Um, when I was younger, I did really enjoy watching gymnastics, but I knew I didn't have the opportunity to do it. Um, but when she was a little kid, even at age one, like... She was walking before age one. She was constantly jumping downstairs, off couches, um, trying to do flips and cartwheels already on her own. So then my husband and I got talking and we're like, yeah, this is perfect for her. So um, we were living in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and there's a local gym there. And we talked to the owner and the owner's like, yeah, she, if she's already doing those things, bring her in early. Um, so. But her class actually started for age three. Nice. Yeah, so you're kind of like a little prodigy then, huh? Yeah, I guess so. You guess so. No, that's awesome. So you've been doing it, Emma, you've been doing it now. Uh, basically, you've been doing it since you, I mean, you probably don't even remember when you weren't doing it because you've always been yeah. doing gymnastics. Did you, did you play any other sports other than gymnastics I since? I think I tried dance. Do you remember if you liked dance? Well, I liked it a little bit at first, but then I decided that it wasn't really my thing. Ah, uh, okay. And gymnastics. How many competitions did you do last year? What grade are you in right now? I'm in fourth grade. Okay, so how many competitions did you do while you are in the fourth grade? Too many to count? I think I did eight. Does that feel like a lot of competition, or does that feel like just that's just what we do? That's just how many I do in my season. Okay. And tell us a little bit more about gymnastics, because I think we see gymnastics every four years during the Olympics, but I, I think if you're not like a gymnastics parent or a gymnastics enthusiast, you don't kind of know what goes on. So there's there's a number of different routines or, or activities. Yeah, yeah. What you, so what would you call we those? so you start off with the rec team, which is like going once a week, practicing okay. all the skills, and then once you've mastered certain skills, depending on what gym you're at, and how they organize the levels, mm-hmm. then you are invited to join the team. Yep. And then once you're on the team, then that's when you go to meets. Mm-hmm. So we are going through a different route compared to SUNY and many other Hmong girls. Mm-hmm. So I think. In our community, we're very aware of the private route, which mm-hmm. is, you know, you go to this private gym, you, you pay money, you go through all the rec um, classes, then you join the team, and you go through Excel, or what they call is Junior Olympics, or mm-hmm. DP team, and then you train with them. But we are in a different route. We are called MAGA, so it's mm-hmm. M-A-G-A. Heck yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it stands for Midwest Amateur Gymnastics Association. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, not the other one. 
It's funny because I tried to post a couple of things, but when I put Mega on it, Facebook flags yeah. me all the time. And oh, I right. and <laughs> yeah, definitely will ha if you hashtag it, I'm sure it even works. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so she's through the Mega route, which is the route that is going to take her to high school gymnastics and college gymnastics. Okay. So the private route, you can still switch over, but the private private route is if your ultimate goal is um, eventually the Olympics, sure. mm -hmm. but that route is a very slim chance route right. and it's very rigorous and most of the time those girls don't get to have a normal high school or college yeah, life. Gotcha. Basically it's like one where the focus is entirely on the gymnastics where you're going, one you're going to NCAA and yeah. one you're going privately training the whole time and you're doing private, like it's like club competition yeah, and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. But they don't... Oh. Can girls compete in both? Can they be an NC? Can you? Oh, not when you're NCAA, because I'm assuming when you get to to divisional co or like college, you're probably you probably have to commit your your yeah, your yeah. body to yeah. just that. But when you're going up through high school, are you allowed to compete both in school and compete in your private? Typically, competition? typically they can't because okay. most of the practice is the same, like the oh, same it's like days, days, and it's the same season. Okay. So oh, while okay. She just finished up her season, but then all the private, um, like the Excel team and the DP team, they are also in season at the same time. So okay, it's a winter, got it, got winter it. sport. Got it. Yeah. They're like, they're like uh, and I assume they're, they're almost like separate teams, different coaches, so yeah, they, it wouldn't make sense to follow, go coach here yeah, and here. Yeah, they also follow different rules. So when you uh, go through the private route, it's all um, labeled by levels. So let's say you're in level three. That means that you only compete certain skills at level yeah. three. You can practice more advanced skills at your gym, but you won't be competing those more right. advanced skills. So then you have to compete the level three for bars, floors, uh, beam, and vault. But where she goes, if she is better at like floor or beam, she can advance much faster. Focus on She's not those. held down. Um, so that's what we really enjoy. And then we follow the high school gymnastics rules. So what she's doing right now will easily transfer when she goes to high school. Sure. Yeah. Gotcha. And starting at age seven, you can um, try out for the high school team. I'm uh, not age oh, wow. seven. Grade, seven. Grade seven. Oh, like, sorry. Wow. Grade, grade okay. seven. She can, um, she can try out for the high school team already. Yeah, that yeah. is true. Because, you know, now that I think back to it, like um, in high school, you every once in a while you have like a seventh a or eighth grade, there. yeah, yep. that'll that's some kid prodigy that'll come and destroy everybody. Uh, but you mentioned the four uh, skills. Yep. There's floor, bar. Well, okay, go go ahead. So the four events are floor, vault, bars, and beam. Mm. And which one is your favorite? Um, right now my favorite is bars. Bars. Is bars just a single bar, or is it the uneven bars? It's uneven bars. It's uneven bars. So you're swinging from one bar to the other bar and back and forth. Um, no, I'm not going back and forth. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. But eventually, that's where it gets yeah, to. Yeah. Uneven okay. Bars. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Because single bar is just guys, I think, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow! You yeah. know a lot about gymnastics. I mean, I watch it. I oh, always okay. watch it. Yeah, I always watch gymnastics. I think gymnastic is. I like gymnastics because I think it's really hard. It uh -huh. takes a lot of discipline, yeah. and you have to have a lot of body control. And even I like watching the males too, because yeah. to me they're like the peak muscular yeah. dudes on TV. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's, they're the peak. I mean, that's why I watched it. Requires when I was a lots kid. of yeah. strength. They're, they're, to me, to me, a, a men's gymnast is the peak athlete. He's oh, flexible. Yeah. He's strong. He's he can, he's explosive. He's kind of got you know a lot of qualities. Same with the females too. Yeah. But, well, well, yeah. Let's talk about that because I've been to your event and I don't. See, is this is your team an all girls team or do they have girls and boys or is do boys compete in a separate division? Just I just noticed that uh, I just realized when you said that I didn't see any boys. At our gymnastics gym, we only like for the team we only do girls gymnastics. Okay. But for rec, there are some boys that do it. Okay. Okay. And so, do boys and the girls compete against each other, or do you guys have different? Uh, like it's just girls compete against girls. 
Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Um, yeah, because I saw you at one of your comp. We we came to support one uh, you at one of your competitions, uh, and it was a uh, pretty like it was like pretty it's wild. Like busy. how yeah busy and intense. Like yeah. you guys, uh, you guys were going through all four. Uh, there was four different teams. You guys were each uh, taking your taking your turn doing all your routines, uh, and then. And then all the parents were there. Like it's, I, that was like my first time at a gymnastics event. But that was, uh, I was pretty intense. That was kind of a cool thing to, cool to see. Um, oh, is that kind of normal? Um, is that pretty normal for gymnastics? Uh, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 a whole show. Yeah. It's yeah. very entertaining. Um, they start off with warm ups. So after warm ups, then they have the official meet. Um, so we four is required for your team to qualify in order to go to state but we did eight this season um, so every time we were signed up to go to a meet you know you you pay the fees and then um, the girls are always practicing I mean she she has a pretty she practices about nine to ten hours a week yeah wow. so yeah. how many trips is that to the gym Three times, three times for like three and a half hours, wow. three okay. times a week. Yeah. Emma, let me ask you: when you go to the when you go to the, the competitions and you see all the people around you, or like you see all these people, all these girls are there too. Do you do you go there? Are you like a little bit scared? And it's okay to be scared because sometimes when you're scared, it actually makes you try harder. Are you like kind of scared to be there, and well, until you start, or are you just ready? I've gotten used to the people around me, yeah. but the judges still scare me. Yeah, you never know what they're thinking. And plus, I think judges, sometimes you never know what they're thinking. Maybe, maybe you did really good, and maybe another girl did really good, and then, you know, we don't, you don't know. Every judge is, is different. I think that's probably, I would assume, in gymnastics can kind of be hard. But what are the, so what's the key stuff? So let's say when we do uh, uneven bars. What's the key stuff that the coaches tell you you have to do really well in order to get a really good score? Well, for your dismount, where uh-huh. you go off the bars at the end of your routine, you should stick the landing, and you should have all connections. You should connect all your skills. Mm-hmm. And um, I do a skill called kips and to do a straight arm. Okay. So are you so you need to land with both feet together. Mm-hmm. And do you, do you lose a point if you have to take a step off to kind of rebalance yourself because your body went too far one way or the other? You lose a point for that? Yeah, you do. And then you lose more points if you have to take more steps? Is that kind of like that? Yeah. Okay. So how hard is it for you to how if if I if I made you come off the the uneven bars 10 times how many times do you think you would land like that <laughs> not have to do an extra step um maybe five okay out of 10. so i'm so then that sounds like it's really hard to do because you're kind of i mean you're stopping like here like you can't go anywhere else i feel like that would be really hard well, to land in one there's spot different dismounts so it depends on if she's if it's a dismount that she is a little bit more elementary and she's used to it and oh, she's sure. done it yeah, several yeah, times. Yeah, but yeah, so in, she's yeah. doing the fly away. So then she releases when she's lateral and then tucks flips. and flips backwards, backwards onto the floor. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mat. Onto the mat, yeah. <laughs> I love that, Emma. Yeah, so uh, the, the bars is, you know, it's an incredibly hard exercise because you have to have a lot of upper body strength yeah. to mm-hmm. hold yourself up. You know, and then um, I think one very important thing is to not fall off the bars. So yeah, once you, yeah. if you fall off the bars, then on your skill, your skill does not count. Mm. So you actually lose a whole point. But if okay. you just take a step, like what you said earlier, then she's losing like a smaller deduction. Sure. But you it completed could, your routine. Yeah, so it could be like a point two yeah. deduction. But if it's a huge step, it might be like a point three deduction. So those are smaller deductions yeah. as long as she's still standing upright she's completed the skill. Yeah. And you mentioned earlier about going in three times a week for three and a half hours every time. Yeah. So that, or 
with about so about well three three hours every time. Yeah. Um, I guess for you as a parent, how do you balance that between like schoolwork um, and then also like just f social time with like friends and family? Yeah. Uh, I guess like you can answer and then you can answer after that, Emma. Do you want to go first, Emma? Yeah. Um, how do you feel when you go three times a week? Well, so the practices are five to eight thirty mm -hmm. p.m. So it's like after school, I end school at like three ten, but I get home at three twenty seven, and so I still have a little bit of time to play with my neighbors. Okay. Yeah, and your neighbors are your friends, right? Um. Do they go? Do you, all your neighbors go to the same school too? Yeah, so You mostly. come home, you hang out with them for a little bit, and then you go to gymnastics, right? Yeah. Okay. What about homework? When are you doing? When do you have time for homework? I don't have homework. I usually read a little bit. Ah, okay. Or do there's just this math game called Dreambox that we also have assignments, but okay. we don't have actual homework. Okay. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's cool. whatever. <laughs> well, for elementary yeah. in their district, if they don't complete it in the classroom, then they can take it home as homework. So for her, like, she's just, just completes it in class. Yeah. Um, so she doesn't have homework. But when she goes to middle school and high school, like some of the peers in, in her, on her team, they will have homework or she okay. will have homework later on. But there's no homework yet. Okay. Yeah. And she, you know, she loves going to the gym. Like, she doesn't ever feel like... Um, like it's a chore for her or that she doesn't want to go. She, when it's 8.30 and it's time to leave, the coaches are literally trying to kick all the girls out because, you know, they have to yeah. go home. They have to eat dinner too. But yeah. the girls, they, they always end up saying, one more, one more. Let me just do one more. Yeah. And so we usually end up staying just a tad bit later than yeah. 8.30. Is that true, Emma? Yeah, it is. Okay, so you yeah. love it then. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it doesn't end up being too late um but when she first started the season she was only in third grade yeah so then that felt like oh my gosh 8 30 she needs to be in bed already yeah um so that did feel a little bit late and there was a few times during season where we would take her out a little bit early so that she wasn't too exhausted okay gotcha yeah because uh, you know you always hear about hey sometimes parents kind of putting them their their kids in sports or kind of forcing their kids to yeah. be in sports yeah. Uh, when they're like unwilling or when they don't want to. Have you ever thought about um, like when that, when that day comes, like how does that conversation go? Um, and yeah. And I already did it. Oh, you already did it. Okay. okay. I'm already guilty of it. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So she, she's done dance before and, and that was fun for her because she mm -hmm. was still like about four years old. Um, she was in swimming lessons for a really long time and she did really well and she's just a natural swimmer. Mm -hmm. So um, we did have her trial for the team and she made the team. And then she did diving at the U of M yep. at the diving school because swimming and gymnastics just go in hand yeah. equals diving, you know. Yeah, I guess flipping. Yeah, and, and yeah. I'm thinking ahead like college scholarships yeah, and yeah. you know there's yeah. less competition with the diving yeah, yeah. and more with gymnastics so she did do um diving at the u of m for like a year and a half and yeah. and she was great at it yeah but she didn't enjoy it and okay. so she was doing like two of those things together and she was about six six years old at this time mm. and she said mommy i don't even have time to play with my friends mm. right and so that like stuck with me and I'm thinking like okay she's six like why is she doing these two yeah, things yeah, yeah that's an that's an intense schedule because I imagine yeah because her diving yeah. was three and a half hours too oh, twice wow, a week yeah. yeah and I mean and then eventually we paid for like three times a week driving yeah. to the U of M dropping her off um so we scaled back and then we also noticed like the hands are different in gymnastics and in diving and in swimming. Mm -hmm. So then we scaled back and we said, okay, you know, just choose one and that's what we're going to concentrate yeah. on. Okay. And of course she picked gymnastics. Yeah. Even though I was kind of leaning towards the <laughs> scholarship way. Yeah. Um, but a lot of kids that do high school gymnastics or college gymnastics yeah. um, 
during their off season, they go into diving too. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So All that right. could still be a potential in her future if she wants to yeah, go I that way. Yeah, I think that's the. I think that's the difficult. I mean, I'm not a parent, uh, but I was in sports since I was like five. Yeah. Uh, my dad always put me in sports, and I think that that's a conversation that at some point you have to you you will cross. You know, where you're based yeah. on where your kids are, like what do they want to do. Because, uh, like, for me, I remember significantly when my dad eventually, I was 14 when he said, he said, hey, we're paying, like, thousands of dollars for you to be here. Yeah. Like, do you still want to play this? And so, I, you know, thankfully at 14, I had enough guts, I think, then to be like, no, I think I'm done, yeah. you know, as a freshman. But I, I assume that that's a conversation that, and I just assume if I was, I'm a pretty competitive person. If I had children, I would definitely put them in sports. Yeah. And then I'd be like, oh, no, you have to try, try but eventually, like, the conversation has to come because you're able to just see your child be maybe not as interested in that year or yeah. not as interested in that moment in time. And yeah. so I, I uh, well, you've already kind of crossed that with the other sports, but. Yeah, I mean, we, we did put her in a couple of things just to kind of bring a different part of her yeah. out and have her try it. Because yeah. if, if she doesn't try it, she's not going right. to know whether or not she likes it. So she did try um, basketball and then. She went to Warman for, for a bit yeah. for Muay Thai. Um, so, so she's tried a number of things, and I think that, you know, we are all, the whole family's all very confident about what she's good yeah. at and what she loves. You didn't like those so much, Emma? The yeah, basketball? Like basketball no. Or Muay Thai. No. What? Well, we were nervous when we had her play basketball, and we went and bought, like, special shoes to protect her ankle because we wanted to make sure that yeah. her ankle yeah. was fine for, for her season to come too. So no, it's, it's true. You could, so when you do a lot of sports too, and you do have like kids who are multi-athletes, but um, I, I always think of the idea of like when you focus on one, yeah. it's true that you, uh, because, you because you still That's have to be a love. kid too. Yeah, yeah and you yeah. still have to be a kid. Yeah. You still got to have homework time, time to do other things. So yeah. you, how much time can you really fit in to yeah. do like right. three sports? Yeah. yeah, and I think as a firstborn, like firstborn kids, they just, they know what they like and they're yeah. just very dedicated and motivated to just that one yeah. thing. And this is her one thing that she's always loved since yeah. she was a kid. Yeah. Emma, do you like the, because floor is more kind of like a dance routine, right? Yeah, it is. Do you, okay, let me ask you, why, why, do you like, why do you like doing the uneven bars more than you like doing the floor? Well, I'm not really the dancing type okay. of person. Okay. And like the floor routines get me really tired. But I do like tumbling on the floor. As for bars, I like flipping off yeah. the bars, and I like doing the things on the bars. Like, because from going to low bar to the high bar, I do a squat on, and that's fun. Mm. Do, you watch, do you watch a lot of uh, other gymnasts on, other than at your gym, do you like to watch gymnastics on YouTube? Or do yeah. you just... I, I watch some on my mom's phone on Facebook. Okay. Okay, no, I just ask because sometimes, like, when I was a kid, I always, wa I always liked to watch my own sport because I was, I was always, no, I don't know if I was trying to learn something or if I just enjoyed the sport, so I would watch it. But then I've also heard of, like, some kids, they just do the sport, but then they don't watch it. And that's, and that's fine, Those too. The ones that their parents forced them to. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, yeah, but I, th I think some kids are just, uh, yeah, maybe, yeah, 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 it could be, too, yeah. Um, I just, I'm just always curious if, like, when you guys do, like, when you do your sport, if it's, if you like to watch it, too, you know? Because sometimes some, oh, yeah. some kids like to just do the sport, and they don't, not, not as interested in No, it, it's, like, in very motivating it. when she watches, you know, other kids, especially older kids. So we've taken her to, like, a high school meet, to, a, to the U of M college meet, so that she can see some of those skills that are in her future. Yeah. Mm. And it's, it's really fun for her to go with her friends and hang out. What do you, what do you out. think of, the, of that, Emma? When you see the bigger girls doing, like... Releases way more and stuff and crazy stuff like is that inspiring to you yeah it is inspiring to you're me. like I'm, I'm gonna do that soon yeah. <laughs> yeah um and then speaking of inspiration like you got a chance to meet Sinisa uh this past summer right yeah i met her a couple of times a couple oh, of nice. times uh did you guys get to practice together or is it just like kind of a meet it's and greet 
It was just like a meet and greet, not really be God's friends. Okay. And then I, and this is a question for both of you guys, but what does having Sinisa win the Olympic, what does that mean for you guys as like Hmong women, right? Or as Hmong girls, or as just Hmong people in general, or, or, or especially for you as a uh, practicing gymnast, what does that mean for you guys? It's an inspiration mm -hmm. that she won first place in all around at the Olympics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what about you, Mom? Like, what does kind of Sinisa mean for you, especially having a daughter in gymnastics, you being a Hmong woman, like, uh, or a Hmong person? Like, what does that mean for you? Yeah, I mean, she's definitely an inspiration. You know, she's one of the Hmong girls have, that have gone all the way in a sport that we haven't seen before. Mm -hmm. um, so she's a huge inspiration, and we wish her well. And... You know, we watch her all the time every time she competes or if she uploads a video, we're, we're always watching her. Um, and I think that we, we support her and Emma is really enjoying gymnastics. So yeah. I think, you know, that's something that could be in Emma's future. Whereas when I was growing up, that mm -hmm. wasn't in my future. That's right. not the type of people that I saw on TV growing right. up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you see it, it's very, uh, it's like we, Peng and I have talked on this podcast before with other people about representation, and yeah. I think I always was of the mindset that like, oh, I don't need representation, I can just do it, and if I'm good enough, I'm going to get there, but but then when you think about it, really, uh, it really does matter, like, yeah. well, just when seeing you see it, someone yeah, just there, seeing it, then yeah. that's when you say like, we are good enough, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you don't see us up there, yep. then you're thinking like, well, we can only be up there if we're good enough. Right, right. No, definitely. It just opens up that light bulb in your head to say like, oh, if they, if they can, why can't they? And so I think it just allows you to train uh, knowing that like, hey, we're, we're good enough, just like you said. Because yeah. being good enough is a thing that we always, I think, all of us, even when we're kids, it's yeah. like, are we good enough? Are we good enough? Yeah. 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 I mean, and you know, it's true. Like, talent can only take you so far, right? Yeah. So I think that um, there's a lot of dedication mm -hmm. and motivation and um, inspiration that needs to go along with it. And then also parent support. Yeah. yeah. I think, you know, when we were growing up, we didn't have that parent support. Yeah. So when you talk about, like, representation, not just representation in the sport itself, but in the audience, yep. among mm -hmm. the spectators, with the parents that come to watch. Like right now in our mega association, from the list that I've seen, there's only three Hmong girls that, mm -hmm. are, um, that are in the association. And so when we go to these meets, it is mostly just Mika folks, mm -hmm. you know, we like, the Asians, the African Americans, yeah. the, the the black kids, you know, there's only just a few of us there. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you've been in it for uh, seven years, right? So have you seen a little change? Like, have you no. seen more, or has, has it always just? It's remained? always been a lot of okay. Mika folks. I okay. mean, because to even afford rec classes. Yeah, and that was my question. Yeah, it's yeah. How yeah. Like, what what are the numbers looking like if? I have a daughter eventually, or if Payne says, I want yeah. to put my daughter in gymnastics. There are like, much cheaper sports out there. Okay. And then, because gymnastics is one of those things that mainly you could just practice at the gym, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, because yeah, it's yeah. so expensive you for you to space, set up yeah. your own gym, right, and you right. need the space height-wise and length-wise. And so, um, she's always been at a private gym until we joined the Mega, because we didn't even know the Mega existed mm -hmm. until one of her coach at the private gym told us about it. So then that's when we made the switch over. Um, but yeah, she's always been at the private gyms. We were always paying those private tuitions. And so when you go to something like that, like all of her peers around her, the moms that you meet, all of those are going to be yeah. different. You know? I mean, what, what, and I go back to the number, but what's a private gym? Just so that people can know, like, that's the cost of gymnastics private gymnastics yeah, and, so, yeah. And, and where you're at now is i'm assuming cheaper it it is More it's kid. better price okay. so okay. mega runs through community ed okay oh, because okay. they because okay. they filter their kids to high school and college okay. so they've so they are um 
a better price. And then we also have a parent booster club, which helps us to like decrease our costs a little bit too. Okay. Mm. Um, it is it is still pricey compared to other yeah. sports, yeah. but it's less expensive per hour yeah. based upon what we were paying yeah. at the private gyms. Well, yeah. I, can, I can tell you, I got uh, two of my daughters are in gymnastics right now and we pay, I, I want to get this right. I think uh, like ballpark. I think roughly like a hundred for each of them, if not Third a little month? bit more. Yeah. Yeah, and that's not, like the that's yeah. like the beginning levels. Yeah. Yeah. So once once the levels get harder, it's also more expensive and more hours You're are required. You're doing a hundred dollars a month per daughter, roughly for how many times a week? Once uh, a week. It, yeah, they go okay. once a week. So once a week, yeah. an so hour. Like, say, yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah. four yeah. or five hundred bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Once you go multiple times a week. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. a handful of gyms. Um, because yeah, when, when she started going out, when she started going to the sessions, it, you would pay per her session, so it would mm -hmm. be like a two and a half month commitment. Yeah. But now all the gyms, they go to just one month commitment, one month commitment. So it can run you anywhere between 100 to $200 okay. based upon the level yeah. and how many, because um, it goes like one hour, then it's like 90 minutes, then it's like 75 minutes, depending on yeah. the, the level of your child. Yeah, and no, I'm always curious about the cost of those things because, uh, yeah, because sports are expensive and it's just, it goes back to the same thing like what my dad told me when we were playing club soccer, which is like 2002, for four months was like 1500 bucks and my dad's like if you're not gonna play this yeah. seriously like yeah. tell me now yeah. and I, lo I like that he gave me the decision at 14 to make that choice although sometimes I think back and I'm like man my dad should have pushed me a little bit more yeah. maybe I would have yeah. listened you know yeah. Yeah. maybe yeah. I would have listened but I was also very stubborn at that age to the point where even if he told me I would have been like no I'm doing something else but but yeah I, I can understand him now as an adult when he was a you know when he was looking at his son as a 14 year old and say hey this is expensive. Yeah. Like we work hard for you to be here. Yeah. And I think that's just a, yeah, I think that I find that that would be difficult. I'm, like I said, I'm not a parent, but I would yeah. just find that it would be difficult at some point where you, if you don't see the, the, um, organic interest anymore, yeah. then it's a conversation to have. And, and you push them past that and say, no, no, you have to keep trying, you know? So, yeah, I mean, her gymnastics fee is just part of our budget now. Yeah, so yeah. it's it's not, I mean, because we've been paying that for yeah. the past seven years. Mm -hmm, so it's yeah. it's not even like, you know how sometimes you put money on the side for like for extra the, things. Yeah, but right. nope, this is just budgeted. Just the non-negotiable. Yeah, 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 this, this, is, do, this yeah. is what we do as as parents is that we, we, we make it affordable. Yeah. And then yeah. Uh, you had mentioned your little brother. Uh, you have two kids. So Emma... And then you have uh, Julian, Julian, who is two years younger. Is he involved in sports? Yes. Um, he did warm-in for a while. Mm -hmm. And then that's the Muay Thai. And now he's doing soccer. Okay. So how do you balance their two schedules? Do they, do they, do they play or do they train on the same day? Do they practice summer? Or well, soccer is a summer uh, sport. Right? Yeah, but he yeah. does, he does uh, indoor skills. So we okay. pay for oh, him to yeah, do indoor yeah. skills. Um, so he's in his third session of that right now. But mm. uh, we just split up. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. like he has indoor skills on a Saturday morning and she was having her competition Saturday mornings too. So we just split up. Mm. And, um, you know, we, we split up so that we're showing up for both of them. Yeah. And for, uh, my husband and I were very involved. So we show up to practices. We make sure that, you know, our pres presence is known to our children and also to the coaches. Yeah. I think it speaks volumes when the coaches see the parent in the audience. Yeah. And then, yeah, so we we watch and, and we try to motivate her at home. We do, my husband is really into it now. So he does additional coaching at home. <laughs> so my husband and my daughter yeah, will watch. Yeah. They'll watch YouTube videos about the proper form of doing things. Yeah. We've got a little bar, a mat, a beam at, mm -hmm. in our basement. Um, my husband is really into working out, too. So yeah. um, both of them, they do some strength training at home, just fun things like jumping. We have mm -hmm. a little rope that they climb on. Um, he has them do pull-ups and... What, what are they like? Explosive push-ups, things like that that they do in the basement. Oh. Yeah, and that has really helped her like build that upper body strength to yeah. love bars and to yeah. just. I mean, she's really exploded since she started. Um, mm. She got awarded the most improved athlete, and 
and she's just learned a lot of skills just in this past year since my husband's been working with her. That's awesome. Like, it, it's so great to see, like, parents involved, and I think that's something we talked about, and that's why we wanted to bring uh, athletes and their, yeah. their parents involved. I know we have talked earlier about when we were kids, uh, you know, sometimes we didn't see that support. I know oh, yeah. you're my sister, so, I mean, you were, you were an athlete, you played tennis. Um, did you play soccer? No, no, I only had okay. time for tennis as okay. the oldest daughter, you know, yeah. there were lots of responsibilities. But, you know, during that time, it was like other people's parents showed up, but yeah. my parents didn't show up. Yeah. And, yeah. and so now that we have kids, we want to show up for, for our kids in, mm. in lots of different formats, you know, whether it's just practicing them at home, with mm -hmm. them at home, or going to their practice, or taking them to games. Or even little things like taking them to hang out with their friends, yeah. you know, for gymnastics or having a play date. So just small things like that to show them that we care. Yeah. I, I definitely remember um, one time during wrestling practice, like, um, or no, we had a wrestling tournament. We had to get up at like 4 a.m., go to the school to catch a bus to go wrestle somewhere. And my friend's mom picked me up. Yeah. Uh, and I thought that was kind of crazy because, like, I was like, I had planned on walking there, and then the night before, uh, my my friend's mom like was like, "Yeah, I'll just pick you up if you're if you're going to yeah. be walking in the you know in the winter time to 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 school." Um, but I thought that was just so like that was just so foreign to me, just yeah. because like yeah. I I have never you know and you know our you know you know our mom's situation she yeah. couldn't do yeah. it she was on a wheelchair and she supported us the best way she could. Uh, but it was just like this idea of like, dang, like, some, like. It's just a, a, like a different level. Yeah. You know, I think as, I mean, we, I'm a refugee, like our parents and our mm. two brothers are, are refugees. And so their mode is a survival mode. Mm, yeah. So for them, they're worried about making sure we're fed. They're worried right. about making mm -hmm. sure that we have a roof on top of our heads. So those things were not a top priority and, mm -hmm. I, and I understand that. But I yeah. think now as, as like just being here for so long and the new generations, like the priorities change. I think it's um, like for me, it's very healing to be there for my daughter, mm -hmm. to be able to be there for her. Yeah. Um, when I watch her play as a 10 year old, cause me as a 10 year old, I was taking care of this and this and yeah. this siblings, Babysitting cooking yeah. and yeah. you know, teaching and helping you guys with homework, yeah. Yeah. you know? So that in itself causes a lot of like childhood trauma cause I didn't get a chance to be a kid. Yeah. So for my daughter, like it's so nice, like it's so healing to just watch her still play with dolls at age mm -hmm. 10 mm -hmm. instead of cooking a whole meal for me or something yeah. like that, you know? So I think the, the priorities are just different and, yeah. and we're able to heal through that way. Yeah. Yeah, because, yeah, you were the older siblings. Um, you were the older sibling and because of you guys were always taking care of us. I remember being 10-year-old and playing with dolls, but that's because we had yeah. you guys. So I think the nice thing, too, is uh, because, like you said, our parents were trying to survive and that yeah. was their mindset and they didn't grow up like with the freedom of playing these sports and and, and so you're kind of like the cross in between where you still have to do a little bit of that yeah. but you still also had the exposure to structured sports and organized sports and so that's beneficial to your to emma because yeah now emma because you can bring a structured approach to her game which I think is like the biggest advantage that I see. And some kids will just get it. I think it's natural. But then you always so see that some kids who do go far is because they're privileged in the sense that their dad was structured in sports and then their grandpa was structured in sports. So it's like been generational. So it's to, built in. Yeah, you understand that training, the, this yeah. is what it requires. This is what the amount of time that we need. And sometimes they're a little tougher on their kids too. Like you always hear about some athletes that become pro and – and you and I'll, I'll listen to those athletes in interviews because I'm always curious. So what is it? What is the athletes upgrowing? What was it like? And yeah. some of them, it's like, oh, my dad made me train this hard and this hard. So yeah. it is more disciplined, but it gets them to the goal because the parents understood and their parents understood and the whole family understood. Yeah. And yeah, and our parents just it's like you said, it's it's not their fault. It's just 
the times, our times. That's yeah. just what it was. Yeah. Just what it was. Yeah, I mean, when our son has soccer games, and he's just playing rec right now, you know, we make sure that we go and Emma goes yeah. to support. When Emma has meets, like, our son always goes with us to, yeah. to watch to watch all of her meets too. So yeah, it's it's, it's a family affair. Yeah, it yeah, has yeah, 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 it has to be. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Um, Emma, so tell us, uh, tell us a little bit more about your journey. What are your goals for uh, gymnastics? Like my goals are to be like better and get bigger skills. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so right now your favorite event is... Um, bars. 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 So what is one goal specifically with the bars that you're working on to improve? A switch kip and mm -hmm. a cast handstand. Okay. A switch kip is where like you glide swing and then you switch your hands around the oh, other yeah. way. Okay. And then you kip. And then that's going from one bar to the other bar, right? No, no that's when oh. she's still on the same bar. And you're same upside bar. down, right? You're upside down, so and she's, then you switch hands. Yeah, she's switching. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, okay, 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 yep, yep. You're yeah. basically switching direction, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. she's you're switching, switching direction. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So that's extra points when you switch in direction. Okay. And then a cast handstand is when you cast up into a handstand. Yeah, mm -hmm. handstand on top of the bar. Which wow. that's, that's a lot of, yeah. That's incredible. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then a pirouette, too, right? I'm not working on those because okay. not, those not yet. Okay. Uh, is that is is that pretty standard for like ten year olds to start working on those um, um, those skills? I guess it depends on what level. Yeah. You know, yeah. like um, I think it's it's pretty standard. But I think where we are, um, you know, if if that's the exercise you're really great at, like mm -hmm. then the coach can push you a little bit yeah. further to do more. Mm -hmm. um, but there are kids that are older than her, mm -hmm. a handful of them that are older than her that is working on the same skills. Okay. So I would say she does have an upper hand. Mm -hmm. um, Cause if you watch high school gymnastics, some, some of the high school girls are doing s something that's like similar to what she's doing yeah. okay. right now. So by the time she gets to high school age, she's going to be like really ready for the high school team already. Gotcha. Even, and, yeah. And in gymnastics too, you always notice that like, especially, if, well, yeah, I, I mean, guys and girls, like one thing that I always notice, cause I always like to look at like people's ability or agility in each sport. And you notice with gymnastics, it's very young person sport. Like yes. it's from like 12 to like, like even SUNY being 20, 21 now. 21 now. Yeah. Yeah. Or like I remember Simone when Simone uh, is 27 exactly. now. Exactly. I remember yeah. when Simone Biles. 27 old. Oh, in gymnastics, is you're old, yeah. you're old yeah. Old because your your flexibility and your agility. Yeah. I, I think your your agility probably is still kind of there, but your flexibility probably loses yeah. some. Yeah. And like yeah, I remember with Simone Biles. Women, yeah. I, yeah. I remember when Simone Biles uh, was in the last Olympic Games. Um, yeah, they were considering her old already, and and yep. you. Do, I mean, if you look historically through all the gymnasts, you can just see that, like, okay, the female body goes through some changes in Basically your mid twenties. Like after yeah, you're, twenty. <laughs> it's like twelve yeah. to yeah, they're, they're twenty. Peak is yeah, is like that eighteen. Yeah. Seventeen, yeah. eighteen yeah. year old. But I think the beautiful part about gymnastics, why I really like it too, is I think it's so up. It, if you're a great gymnast, you can be good at like so many things. Yeah. Because yes. Exactly. You have so much body control, and you're so used to your own body uh, that you can adapt to dance. You can adapt to anything, yeah. Because you're just, yeah. Your control is, you get the highest level of control of, I'd say, a lot of sports mm -hmm. as a gymnast. Yeah, it's also very hard on your body, so that's yeah, why that's it is recommended really that tough. you do, you know, retire a little bit earlier on. Yeah, yeah. And so, Emma, like, do you, um, kind of on that topic, like. Uh, you know, your uncle used to be a bodybuilder, right? I used to compete. And so one of the things I always talk about now is that I still carry those same uh, work ethic into everything that I do. Do you, s I know you're a little young, but do you see some of that translating into like your schoolwork? Like, um, or is it just kind of fun right now? It's just fun right now. Okay, okay. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, maybe that's like a little higher level. I got a question for you, Emma. Are you, after a hard practice, do you feel like your body hurts from some of the practice or are you, 
or do you recover really fast? I get sore sometimes. Okay. Yeah, I just always wonder because it's a hard sport, and and I, I, you know, now I'm like an old man, so I can't remember yeah. what it felt like when I was a young kid. Like, because I feel like when I was your age, I feel like I did, never felt it. It was just like I can just go tomorrow. I can just go tomorrow. But, but now I'm old. I'm an old guy, and I'm just curious. Like, whoa, is your body hurt after that? Yeah. But I guess do you feel like you need a day or two, or like you could you practice every day? You think, and still be like pretty like feeling almost 100% I don't know about every day okay but like every other day every other day is plenty okay so 48 hour recovery time is solid yeah I mean sometimes <laughs> during the competition season the coach will open up like an open gym mm -hmm. the okay. Friday night before they compete on Saturday morning just to get some extra practice in mm -hmm. but um, we, we we tell her that it's better to have her body rest mm -hmm. Um, so that she yeah. is ready to compete the next day. So I think we, we make some of those executive decisions to help yeah. her balance it out. Um, so we, oftentimes we won't go to those open gym sessions. Yeah. yeah. That's really smart. So in, in a lot of other sports and competitive sports, like there's like an off season and they, they still continue to work um, in the off season like towards like getting whether it's like strength training yeah. or like working towards the skills so what's the off season look like for you guys so are you guys doing like mega exists as an alternative to mm -hmm. girls that love gymnastics but still mm -hmm. seek like a regular school life social mm -hmm. life okay. and so on and then it also allows for you to play other season sports Okay. Yeah. Um, but it is a year-round program still available for the girls that want to do it year-round. Okay. So oftentimes we do get, you know, um, teenagers that will come join us because um, mm. in high school gymnastics, like other high school sports, you only practice within season. Yeah. So we get a handful of girls that want to practice it year-round. So then they join us rather than their high school. Is gymnastics season in high school winter sport? Winter sport, okay. too. Yeah. yeah. So Emma actually practices year round. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's and it makes a huge difference when you practice oh, year round sure, versus sure. you know taking a break. When yeah. you compound all those hours, if you go yeah. year round, yeah. you're yeah. you're getting much more reps. Yeah. And then it's probably pretty pretty neat to see like I guess like the high school athletes coming in and joining your your MAGA team, right? And then just to kind of see them how they do their routines is probably like pretty inspirational for you, right? Um, last summer they weren't doing things that were too advanced. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, sometimes it's the same stuff. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, okay. I, yeah, and I assume in gymnastics, just like all sports, sometimes the 12-year-old is already levels ahead. And yeah. sometimes yeah. Yeah. not oh, everybody's yeah. got this. Because I assume, if, and this is my assumption, but in gymnastics, if you have 100 girls, not every girl is has the same ability to do like... Mm. And, and sometimes you're in sports because you just want to be in sports, yeah, right? You yeah, put your children yeah, in sport yeah. because it's something to do and it's something no, it's that true, they enjoy yeah. that is fun. So competition levels are all different. And I can only assume in gymnastics, not every girl can do, f not every girl is going to be able to flip on a beam, right? yeah, you know? Yeah. Not everyone's and, going to the Olympics. Yeah. 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 But yeah. flipping on a beam, just that seems like a hard skill because I've watched and I'm like, mm, like even when I watch on YouTube and stuff, I'm like, no, not every girl can backflip on a beam like yeah. that's pretty hard i mean it's it's progressive skills yeah. right yeah. i mean i think also at an early age if you show a lot of flexibility already mm -hmm. yes. then depending on who your coach is is going to really use that hone and yeah. hone in on that flexibility and the skills that you will be displaying for the judges and everyone mm -hmm. else is going to show a little bit more flexibility mm -hmm. well i have a question emma when you get because because you do beam too right yeah. Is the beam, how tall is the beam that you, you, that you guys compete on? It's like... Taller than you or no? Uh, four uh, feet high. Oh, I don't know that. Yeah, it's, <laughs> okay. it's four feet high and then it's four inches across. It's four inches okay. across. Yeah, I believe okay. it's four inches across. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Have you fallen off that beam pretty hard before? Yeah, I have. Okay. Does the beam scare you a little bit? Yeah, it's like the most mental thing. Yeah. Yeah. Does that hurt? Like, have you ever landed on a beam? Yeah, I have. Like, in between? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think that's probably what makes the beam so hard because, like you said, the beam is scary. So, like, if you can... It's not, like, as wide as your feet, yeah, you know? And so then if you have really if, wide feet... If you can good. flip yeah. on a beam, 
I could see where like mentally that'd be really scary. Like, okay, I'm gonna go backwards in the air, and I have to land on this beam. And and then like you said, the the thought of like getting hurt is always gonna be there. You know, like you can always fall at any time. So I could see how that would be really tough. Yeah. How yeah, long I mean, did we'll, it? Oh, go ahead. We tell her all the time. You know, like. Even Suni, even Simone, like they're still falling off beams. Yeah. Mm, yeah. What we see on TV is just all the yeah. great moments, right? right? It's like, it's like you know, when you're making a video, you you're only just it's showing like certain other. parts, mm. right? Like on Facebook, you're only showing certain highlights of it. Right. So we tell her all the time, you know, it's okay. You you can fall off a hundred times exactly. and nail five, but then next week you're gonna fall off maybe only 80 times and nail 80 of them. Yeah. You know, it's just, the, it's the progression of it and it's it's yeah. working to, to get better and be yeah. more confident So like in it. failure and resilience to yeah. failure is like built into the sport. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, every, every time she has a meet or even when she goes to practices, we always do a lot of like self-assurance and yeah. like, you know, we, we have her recite certain words that's going to be, like, very encouraging for her. Yeah. And even before she, um, she, even before she does her routines, like, we remind her to say certain things to yeah. herself mm -hmm. before can, she goes. Can you tell us what, is, what are some of those things you're saying to yourself? Yeah. Because what are your at the meet. At affirmations. The, yeah, at, at the meet, your mom was like, don't talk to her right now. She's focused. <laughs> you know, mom and dad was like, don't distract her. Uh, so tell us, like, What's going through your mind and like what are you saying to yourself? Like little corrections, like mm. straight legs and I can do this. Yeah. Mm, that's awesome. Like do it like you do in practice. Yeah. Yes. Now do you kind of feel a a difference when you tell yourself that? Do you kinda do you go into it a, like do you do you see a difference in the results? Um no. Yeah. <laughs> But, but it's, it, it's important that you do say that, you know, because yeah. sometimes they always say words are really powerful. Yeah. And so um, I use those same things in my life every day. I'm, I'm a grown old man, and I still use that. And yeah. sometimes for everything, not just for sports, but, like, just telling yourself, I can do this is, uh, you know, because it's nice when your mom tells you. It's nice when your friend tells you. But sometimes, sometimes when you, I assume that when you go on the mat, it's like, oh, wow, okay. Now I got to perform like I don't want to fail. And so just saying those little things, even if you're not, I think even if you don't notice that it helps you, I think it's it does, you know, just saying I can do that. It's it's always helpful. Yeah. I said that this morning when I got <laughs> when I was brushing my teeth in the mirror, getting ready to come here. Um, so tell us a little bit about like what is your. Oh, um, so we talked about doing the flips on the beams. At what age did, you, did that start to come around? Like, did you start to feel more confident doing that? Because you started at two and a half. Well, I didn't start doing a lot of things on a high beam until, like, age seven, eight, or eight. Okay. So, about age eight or nine. Okay, so it took you about a year of doing that until you got more comfortable, right? And so, and, and even t today, right, it's still, you know... Um, I'm still uncomfortable with mm. certain skill sets. Okay, so okay. Yeah, and you mentioned that Sinisa and Simone's, all these top-level people are still, they still struggle with this sometimes, right? So, I mean, I think that's awesome because I, I think you're... I mean, you don't realize it now, Emma, but it's teaching you resilience and it's teaching you to uh, how to not give up, yeah, right? Yeah, I just watched a video of Suni the other day on her Instagram where she was doing the uneven bars yeah. and she was doing a transfer from one to the other. Oh, no. She was doing a flip on yeah. the high bar and trying to catch herself on the way back down and totally missed both the yeah. bar and she fell straight on her oh, stomach. But yeah. it's, uh, I think it was really cool that Suni showed the world that, look, yeah. this is what it takes to, to be good. Is like, uh, like your mom said, you're going to fall a lot of times and when you fall, it's actually good because now you know. Okay, maybe yeah. I need to. Maybe I'm. Maybe when I backflip, I'm going to my left a little too much. And yeah, and her coach is really good about that. So when she falls off a beam or when she, you know, does something that's just a little bit off, her coach will ask her like, "What did you do 
to cause that, you that could fall. Make, yeah, they could do different next yeah. time. Yeah. Was it because your legs weren't straight? Were, were you just like a tap? Your degree was a little bit off. So I think like her coach is really um, like reflective in that way yeah. in teaching her to think back about like what what's her body currently doing right. yeah. like what what are her arms doing during her flips or where is she looking because even where you're looking during your flips makes a huge difference as to how you're going to land and the question for you mom like what um what do you see like how has this changed emma as a person how is it, like has she gained more became more confidence like how and then what benefits do you see like putting your kids in sports yeah i think she's you know she's first of all like it, it's has taught her a lot of like just to be aware of her body and how mm -hmm. she feels so she i think for even when they were really young, like we always taught them about nutrition and how they need to, mm -hmm. you know, feed good food to their body so that they're, they're healthy and growing. Um, so I think that's a really big part in having kids be in sports and be athletic is just to teach them about their bodies and how mm -hmm. to take care of their bodies and how to love their bodies. Um, and it definitely teaches them like what you said, like, perseverance, resilience, yeah. like being able to fall and get right back up. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that, you know, she, even though she may not realize that yet, transfers to, to learning in school, right? Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, being in a organized sport is like being in a classroom where, you know, you're learning new things, you're trying out the skill, you might not get it the first time. And sometimes it's gonna take you like six, 20 times until you nail it. Mm -hmm. Um, so what we see all the time at meets and even at practice is like there's lots of falling mm -hmm. um, But then they get right back up and they try it again like kids are so much more resilient than what we give them credit for Yeah, and their bot at this age like their body's just able to like bounce right back up mm -hmm. and also their mind like yeah, you know, they um, like we started our kids swimming at a really young age like at age three because mm -hmm. at that age they don't know fear yet yeah yeah right yeah. so like for her like she doesn't know how to not swim mm -hmm. yeah once she jumps in that pool she's already floating she's already right. swimming like that's all she knows like yeah. she just knows those skills right so that's what's super important like we give them the skills that are needed so that they have a toolbox full of mm -hmm. skills and then in which whatever situation they face in the future they are pulling out those skills that they need oh, yeah. so that they're making the right decisions for themselves. Yeah. And I think because all of us have played sports too, so now that we're older, we're able to like tie some of those points together. Yeah, like, yeah. oh yeah, when we were young, oh yeah, that's where it helped me. Or like just being part of a team is important, yeah, you know? Yeah, just, yeah. oh, we're part of a team and we have a coach, we have leadership above us. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, Thinking back on my journey when I played sports, we don't, as adults now, we can link that together. But yeah, it's as a kid, it is harder to, to, yeah, to yeah. think about. I mean, I don't think you even think about it. You just play the sport. Yeah. 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 And I think most of all, we just want her to have fun. Yeah. Yeah. Because when she, when we looked into like having her compete, we, we weren't sure if, if she was going to love it. Mm -hmm. um, so we just, we wanted to try it out and wanted to make sure that she has fun. So every day, like when she goes to practice, we ask her and if she has fun, because that's what we wanted to be at yeah. this point. Um, it's, yes, it's competitive. She's doing great things, but she's also having lots of fun because those three and a half hours seem like 30 minutes for her or like, you know, she's not ready to come home yet. So yeah. she has lots of fun when she goes. Oh yeah. That's awesome. Um, so we see here that you also brought some of your trophies and medals. Can you just go through and kind of show us like w what each trophy and medal is and uh, and explain to us like the competition? Because um, you got quite a few up here. Yeah. So this one is... And, and show the camera, show the camera. This one is from one of my meets. I got second place for all around. Mm -hmm. Nice. And then 
So all around means that like all on the four exercise, she scored the second highest score. Oh, That's wow. what all around means, yeah. And then this is also one of my meets where I got second place mm -hmm. on all around. And I also got second place here for vault. Oh, lots of seconds. So who's, who's, who's in first? Who's that? <laughs> um, my friend. Oh, so Sienna. it's your friend. Okay. Yeah. 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 So there's, there's then, another Hmong girl. Oh. Where, uh, for the Wift and Gymnastics uh, yeah. Park team. And so between, she and Emma are the same age, just yeah. a few weeks apart. And they're always swapping so spots. Okay. First and second, awesome. first and, and second. And, yeah. that, and they're in the same they grade. Be. So yeah. her mom and I, we always talk about like, oh, when they go to high school, you know, they're going to really help their high school team. Wow. That's amazing. You know, amazing. go to state and stuff. Yeah. Although sometimes it's not always her in first place for some things. Yeah. Because yeah. it's you, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then this is for our team. We got second place team. Okay. Nice. Nice. This is also another meet where it was where I got first all around. Nice. And then, wow. Oh, yeah. And, you another know, we, we teach her that, like, it's about her getting her own personal best score yeah, every time. So whether she wins first or second or third and yeah. all around, that she's growing and beating her own score every time she's competing. Yeah. And then I got first place on bars this meet, Kenwood. Nice. And then this is from my most recent meet, State, where I got 10th on bars. Mm -hmm. Nice. And then this is the State Individuals Participant Medal. Nice. nice. And then this is my trophy at Individuals at State for awesome. all around 6th place. Awesome. And then individual championships on beam six place. Awesome. Nice. Well, that's great. Good job. Uh, yeah, so it, it was um, last year she didn't go to the individual. She just went to the team state mm -hmm. meet. And so this year she had said like, oh, I really want to go to individuals. I really want to make it there. So individuals is they select the top 24 girls all around mm -hmm. to perform. So she was ranked number ninth um, going into the competition, and then she finished uh, sixth place wow. for her age division. Yeah, and that's awesome. And I remember um, you were saying that you were sick the day before, right? So you couldn't compete in teams, yeah. uh, and then you competed in individuals the day after. So congratulations to you, Emma. That's so awesome. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Uh, I see you guys decked out in Wolf Den gymnastics gear. Can you guys uh, give them a shout out and kind of talk about the team a little bit? Yeah, so Emma practices at Park High School, which is in Cottage High Grove. School. Yeah, um, so the community ed runs their rec program there, and then the mega program runs there, mm -hmm. and then there's also the Park High School gymnastics team that, that practices there. Um, it's been a really great experience. Um, the coach there is really great. Let's see, yeah, we have a booster club, so that does help yeah. with some of the fees to, um, to alleviate some of those fees. Um, and then, yeah, we do fundraising. That's awesome. Um, yeah, Park has a pretty big program yeah. there. And then if anybody wants to support Emma or Wolfden, how do they go about doing that? Um, uh, they can get the fundraiser things. Yeah, we have fundraisers like maybe two or three times uh, a year. Okay. So, um, perfect. But yeah. we're not big on social media or yeah, you know, yeah. like she. Yes. Yeah. I mean, she's she's ten. Yeah. Social media is. Yeah. I'm a teacher myself, so it's just. I think it's just a parent philosophy. You know, mm -hmm. everyone's a little bit different. Yes. Um, but my husband and I has, we we're, we're firm believers in keeping her away for a little bit, you yeah. know, and she, she can view videos and communicate with cousins and all of that mm -hmm. through us. Um, but I think for right now, like, she's 10, you know, we, yeah. we, we want her to yeah. be a, 
when I say normal, I mean, I guess it's not normal now, right? Yeah, yeah, but like yeah. a normal years ago, 10 yeah. year old who's running around, having fun, yeah. playing in the neighborhood. Yeah. yeah, and just, and just, just be herself. And yeah. so, so yeah, she doesn't have a special page or anything like that to follow. But okay. maybe later on when she's in high school and she wants to do that for herself, okay. you know, she'll have the skills to navigate. Mm -hmm. um, those pages on her own, yeah. yeah. How old were you when you had social media? You. Because <laughs> um, I remember we had it pretty, I had it pretty, because I graduated in 2006. I remember having it already when I was like 13. Oh, really? Yeah, probably wow. 2001. Remember yeah. AIM and stuff, I, MSN Messenger? Those things came pretty early. I mean, we were still doing the dial-up. It wasn't until like MySpace. Yeah. Is what I didn't I have remember. MySpace till my senior year. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just curious. No. Yeah. yeah. Oh, maybe no. junior year. Yeah. Yeah, like MySpace wasn't there until I don't know middle school yeah. for me. Yeah. Middle you were school, no. you were ahead of your time, man. No, I yeah. just remember that <laughs> like uh, AIM Messenger, yeah. like Net Zero and stuff like that. Like yeah. I, I can remember that when I was yeah. like probably thir 12, 13 yeah. already. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, like she has things like kid messengers yeah, yeah. where yeah. she messages her friends. Yeah. But it must um, it must be hard regardless. I think these days, I'm, yeah. like I said, oh, I'm yeah. not a parent, but it's it's, yeah. it's such a part of the daily life that like you said it's personal philosophy on yeah yeah what do you yeah. do with it what do you do with that yeah you know? yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah i think as tough. long as you and your your partner or your your, your mate agrees on it and mm -hmm. and makes a firm decision on yeah. it i think yeah. it's it's just it's it's, it's, you know the the, the, the the kid the kid will follow right yeah. like it's yeah. one of those monkey see monkey do monkey right. ears right yeah. so it just yeah. depends yeah oh that's yeah. awesome yeah thank you for sharing that because uh, yeah we've had uh Two other parents uh, before you, and um, you know, people had different. Yeah, people have yeah, different philosophies. Yeah, yeah. philosophies on it, and there's no like right or wrong way. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, but it's just I, what what works for you and what works for your family. Yeah, yeah, and, I, yeah. and I think especially for girls, you know, the way social media yeah, is going. Yeah. And, yeah you know, I think it's um, a hard place to navigate. Yeah. 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 Even yeah. for us, it's hard to navigate. Oh, for me. For yeah. us. It's yeah, I mean, even for our adults, eh, right? <laughs> yeah. We got to make sure it's we put it down yeah. so that it yeah. can, yeah. we can it's be present for yeah. our kids. Yeah. I have to tell you this because you're my sister, but like Lauren already, like, she understands what likes is. Oh, so, like, yeah. On one of my videos, she was like, wow, you have a, you have a lot of likes. <laughs> and then she was, I was just like, wait, how do you even know what likes are? And like, how do you associate that with something like good or bad, you know? And then um, she even asked me, like, um, how do you get more likes? And I was just like, yeah. like, yeah, that already yeah. is like a red flag for me. Yeah, That's and like she's your, five. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. like, one, she doesn't have a social media, but like, how do you even know that? Yeah. Like, it's already kind of like, I'm already like, as a, as a dad, I'm already kind of like, um, should I be concerned about this? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, but yeah. Well, I mean, kids are always listening. So yeah. I am yeah. an elementary yeah. teacher, so I work in St. Paul at a Montessori school. I have first, second, and third graders. Kids are always telling me things that they see from their parents or yeah. they hear yeah. from the parents yeah. or they see on their phone or they, you know. Like I have first graders who have TikTok accounts. Yeah, yeah. And they're always asking to follow me and I said, I don't have a TikTok <laughs> yeah, account. Yeah, yeah. You don't need to have a TikTok account. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yes, that, that is up to your parents, but yeah. there's things on TikTok that yeah. Yeah. you don't want a first yeah. grader or even a fourth grader yeah. or right. maybe even me as an adult. I don't want to yeah. see that, yeah. you know? Yeah, right. And so it just, you know, it really depends on families, yeah. but kids are always listening. Yeah. They are always present. They're listening. Always absorbing. Yeah. Always absorbing. They know much more than what we give them credit yeah, yeah, for. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I'm not surprised that she yeah. said that. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was just, it, it caught me by surprise. And like, she was so enthusiastic about it. And the fact that, again, like she associated with something good. And I was like, oh. You know what? Because she probably it. saw you be excited about the amount yeah, of likes no, you yeah. got. <laughs> And you probably, you probably didn't even say it, yeah. but she probably could just read it in your body language because, yeah. like you said, oh, kids man. are a lot smart. Yeah, yeah. kids are yeah. very smart. And so yeah. she probably just saw you smile at your phone and she's yeah. like, yeah. okay, I associate that as, like, yeah. good, you know, yeah. so. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. but in her near future, she'll, she'll have yeah. an account. 
Yeah. yeah, it's almost unavoidable. You know, I we talked oh, yeah. about this before too, and we said like we were just talking about it. Uh, is it's how much do you like how much do you limit? What do you not limit? Because yeah. it is a part of like eventually as you become an adult, you have to learn to navigate as well. So it's yeah. it's part of the landscape, and it's just like when do I introduce it? And if I do introduce it, what do I control? What do I mm-hmm. you know? It's like I said, I'm not a parent, but it's a thing that I think about that. You know that 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 everyone's gonna cross, yeah. and it's kind of yeah. it scares me to mm-hmm. just think about. Yeah. You know, the idea is scary. Yeah, yeah um, I think as long as you build like a foundation of responsibility and respect there, that yeah. you know, then then they have the skills to to navigate social yeah. media yeah. And, and to the best of our abilities, right? Yeah, to the best yeah, we can, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So that's awesome. Um, do you guys have anything else? Emma, we did a whole hour. Yeah. Did that feel like forever? Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I think an hour must feel so long. Yeah. You can say hi to yeah. some of your friends from yes, gymnastics. Say, yes. Give them Give a, them shout, a shout, out. shout out. Who do you, you want to say hi to? Tell them you are on a podcast. Mm. <laughs> you have a shout out to your team. No? <laughs> shout out Wolf Den Gymnastics. Sorry, we'll do it. (laughs) Go ahead. Who do you want to say hi to? That's okay. Uh, But I I, I did want to say thank you guys. Thank you guys for coming. Uh, Mo, like, um, you know, seeing you and seeing uh, Nang and and, uh, Mata and and now Sai as as parents, like, has always, you guys have always been a big influence for me as a parent now. And so I... You know, I love the way you guys are raising your kids. You guys are always getting your kids involved. Um, so it meant a lot for me, for you guys to come on. Uh, and hopefully, um, you know, hopefully, you know, y- you guys had a good time too. Uh, but I really appreciated it. And you c- you coming on, sharing your story. I, uh, I think that, that, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, no, yeah. I'm- Thank you for, for coming by. You know, I, from, from my perspective, it's funny because I'm getting to meet, like, each one of his siblings with their kids. Yeah, what, so I'm like, well, I just, it's just funny because I get to see how each one of you are different as parents, too, with yeah. your own kids. Yeah. You know, like, I see a lot of differences just when, uh, and obviously, it's just this yeah. is just from a one-hour conversation, but yeah. just seeing Austin with his mom and then seeing you with her, your, yeah. your daughter and, and then, and then obviously seeing him, how he talks yeah. about his daughter. So it's kind of just funny that you guys are all siblings. But yeah. I, I look for the differences, yeah, yeah. and I also look for the similarities. Yeah. The similarity for sure that I notice is that everybody's got a competitive edge in the family. Oh. Like, I see that for sure. You should see us at board games. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I see that, but I think that's cool because yeah. it's going to translate to the kids, and now the cousins will have something in common as well. And then, uh, Emma, thank you for sitting down with us. I know it's kind of... Maybe you're like, oh, old people are so, are so weird that we want to talk for <laughs> yeah. an hour. But uh, we're just as, as for me as an older guy, sometimes I'm just really curious to like, I think it's important that you tell, tell us how you feel and how you like your sport too. Like, it's still interesting to me, you know, just, be, just because we're older doesn't mean that. I don't find it interesting. I think it's really oh, interesting yeah. to find I out mean, you, And, you know, about they're sports. on a different path than we are <laughs> exactly. in their experience. It's- Totally different from what we had. And thanks for bringing all your medals for us to check out. Yeah. (laughs) All right. That's a wrap. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate it again. Thanks. Good job. Good job, Emma.